In this video, we are creating the actual skeleton of the React app. And you're watching Dev Tips with guest hosts MPJ and David. All right. Uh, last time we uh, we were about to install Create React App, which is a tool that allows us to create uh, React App. It creates a skeleton for you, and you do that by uh, installing uh, calling npm install. Uh, dash G, which means global, where uh, don't worry about what that means for now, and uh, writing create React app. Uh, and if you just hit enter, that should hopefully install this thing. Mm -hmm. Magic going on. Yes, exactly. So it just downloads that from npm. Uh, and now it is installed, and I think that uh, it should be usable right now. Good idea is to have this directory for all of your code. Uh, I have uh, a directory that I call code temp. Uh, so you can just go cd, which stands for change directory, uh, to code temp. And then we uh, create our, uh, our application. Uh, so if we just type create react app, like that? Yeah, exactly. And then space, and then the name of the app. Um, better playlists. Cool. So uh, it will do stuff. Don't worry too much about this. Uh, it uh, will basically create a skeleton for us for a, a React app because a React app is. A modern React app is quite a bit of components involved. Uh, it's it's not terribly complicated, but uh, what Create React app will offer you is a nice starter setup. All right, so here we are. Happy hacking, it says. That sounds good. Yeah, exactly. It gives us a few instructions here. It says uh, uh, npm start, start the development server. Okay, so do that and see what happens. So I have to go into the directory and there I hit npm start. Yeah. All right. So this kicks up a browser and we should see our React app. Bam. Cool. You can use any text editor you like, really. Just, um, uh, I prefer Visual Studio Code, uh, which you can install by just Googling Visual Studio Code. The code part is important because it's a special version of Visual Studio. But you can use Atom or uh, Sublime Text or any kind of editor that you prefer. But we're going to use code. So on the left hand side here, we see our uh, little project. It has, uh, has some files. Uh, let's just walk through what the files are actually. Uh, node modules, that is the directory which contains uh, all the installed installed node modules. And as you see, uh, there are a lot of them even just from the start. Um, so create react app uses uh, quite a bit of them. And this is why we need the bundler in order to package these and minimize them. Otherwise, the, your application will end up uh, with an enormous amount of requests. Uh, the public directory is for uh, files that we want to directly uh, directly serve basically non code items stuff like that uh, and uh, the SRC is our actual app it stands for source I believe uh, the git ignore uh, is we're going to talk about git later which is a version control system but what the git ignore contains is stuff that we don't want to have checked into version control don't worry too much if you don't understand what that is uh, we'll talk about that later and then there is the uh, the package uh, package.json package.json uh, don't worry about package.lock.json for now package.json is uh, from from this perspective you can view it as a list of the dependencies that a project has which is the by dependencies i mean the npm modules that we are using uh, so you see here that there are react and react dom and react scripts listed under dependencies uh, we are probably at some point going to pull in uh, pull in some more dependencies uh, but uh, yeah just to give you an idea about what package.json is and the readme is just some information about the files 
So, should we try to edit this in some way? Yes, exactly. So yes, just, just, just go into the project here and find some place where that stuff is defined. Okay, in the app.js. Uh, here is uh, here are some code. Um, we see the text welcome to react here. Just change that to something else. Like that? Yeah. And I just save it? Yeah. And it should live update automatically. Yes, it did. Yee. So this is also one of the nice parts that uh, create react app gives you over uh, fiddling around and, and creating this uh, this application skeleton on your own. Uh, it gives you this live reloading thing, uh, which will just update while you're editing. And that is very, very nice to have. You can do that yourself, of course, but this gives you all of that goody stuff packaged in a nice format. It should also be noted that Create React App is provided by Facebook themselves who are building React, which means that uh, a lot of people use this. So it's very well documented, very well tested and very Googleable. So you can always, when you run into problems with it, you can generally Google those problems. So the first thing I notice is that we're in the app.js file and here's something that looks like JavaScript and it's mixed with HTML. What we're seeing here is JSX, which can be kind of simplified into, I think you can think of it as uh, HTML and JavaScript and CSS mixed. Uh, this is something that takes some time to get emotionally used to, because there was an era in web development that we are slowly moving away from that I grew up with as well, where it was mixing HTML and JavaScript and CSS, that was against the law. You like punishable by death. Uh, React uh, does away with that. Uh, we won't be delving too much into why. Uh, you, there is a lot of reading and a lot of re good reasoning behind that, but we won't, uh, won't spend time with it. Uh, in, for our intents and purposes, you either have to choose to <laughs> just accept it uh, or uh, go to uh, go do some reading on why they've done that design decision. This gives us the benefits of, for instance, if you see here, the logo here, we can just, this is imported from an SVG we, and we can just use it straight here. Uh, it will also allow us, uh, allow us to use variables inside of, um, uh, inside of uh, our HTML. Let's call it hello and then name. Uh, and by the way, as you see here, uh, this is a feature of uh, Create React App that as I type here, uh, it will automatically uh, recompile and it will give me very, very nice, uh, nice error messages uh, in the browser. So it gives you this very nice development flow. So it says unexpected use of name. And that is because I'm using a variable that doesn't exist, which I can define here. Uh, I'm going to call it name. Some of you might be used to uh, using var here for variables. In modern JavaScript, you use let instead of var. We are gonna call that David. And it's hopefully going to recompile now. And uh, no, yes, come on, recompile. No, 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 okay, now it's recompiling. Uh, did not... You don't have to use that in the HTML. Oh, yeah, 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 I'm, I'm being confused. That's templating. Exactly. There's no dollar sign. You just use uh, templates. Uh, it's not a template language. It is not a template language. It is just a, uh, a place where you p can put uh, JavaScript. So the these curly brackets, they allow you to put any JavaScript in between. So this is not, JSX is not really templating. It's not a templating language. It is very, uh, it is just JavaScript and HTML. There are some subtle uh, differences in JSX, such as the fact that you uh, you say class name instead of class uh, for CSS classes. But uh, apart from that uh, and a few other very minor things, what you see is going to be just JavaScript and HTML. There's no special templating syntax or, or plugin structure or anything like that, which you will see in, in handlebars or other templating languages, just HTML and JavaScript. Another thing that is um, uh, strange in JSX is that we use inline styles a lot. 
which is another thing that is um, uh, all, often referred to as illegal as hell in uh, web development circles. So this style, inline style, this is probably what you have seen and what you're, uh, you're used to. Uh, but in React, you don't do it this way. Instead, you pass objects to the style, to the style attribute. So if you watch uh, on the line above, you see that we are uh, we are passing an object, a, a logo vari logo variable. So uh, what you've done now is that you have uh, created a space for for some JavaScript with the curly brackets. Uh, but inside the curly brackets, you have not written uh, valid JavaScript. Oh, so, so I have to add an object. Exactly. So it's there are more once again curly. Exactly. So this is again just normal JavaScript. Oh, yeah. So it's like the, the first set of, of curlies, they start saying, oh, this is a space for JavaScript. And then the next curly brackets are defining that this is now a JavaScript object. And I don't have the variable green. So Precisely. And I'll just make something up here. It's not green. Yeah. I don't yeah. Care. Oh, it's very dark. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah. Like yeah. That. All right. Uh, <laughs> I'm colorblind anyway. It doesn't matter. All right. So let's do some JavaScript here. I just change that var the variable name green to color instead. Color. Yeah. Cool. Uh, so yeah, that makes a bit more sense. I'm gonna show you a pretty cool, neat shift because in in um, you see on line 13 here uh, that we now have this uh, kind of unnecessary uh, assignment it's like okay the color is color it's it just that's not it's very repetitive yeah uh, it seems like to me that the computer should be able to figure that out on its own and it actually can so you can just remove the colon uh, colon here and the other color this yeah exactly oops and it will still work Oh, it's because it figures out that it's within the style attribute, so the value there is a color, and thus it will just create a CSS color of it. Yeah, exactly. Okay, let's play around a little bit with this, just to show that this is just normal JavaScript. Uh, uh, let's... Uh... I pull this out. Yeah, sure. So here we'll have the object, and I've just moved the object here. Yeah. You can call that, uh, let's call that header style instead of color. Yeah. Yeah, cool. And just to show that the, uh, the color green, that it's just a normal JavaScript dollar, uh, uh, object, let's call that, uh, let's add some other property as well. Sure. Make it italic or something. And how do I write that? I have no idea. Just type some uh, some CSS that you know. Font size. Sure. Uh, 50. Pixels. Yes. Reloading. Okay. Wow. That looks That's so pretty. Beautiful. Again, this is hard to deal with for some web developers because they have been told for years and years and years that this is bad. It has been drilled into them. But this is actually fantastic because as you see here, we are using JavaScript in place of where we would need a completely new language. For instance, this in C is not possible to do in CSS. Uh, CSS does not have variables, but JavaScript has variables. So we are just, uh, we are just pulling in green here as a variable. We don't need less or any sp special uh, CSS transpiling thing above. We're just using JavaScript and HTML and CSS. If you look at line five here, we see a little bit of a hint that this is a component. And we talked a little bit about components before. And this is uh, something that we are going to see a lot about, a uh, lot more about in the next episode. Yeah, because in the next episode, we will actually implement the sketch we drew here and we will start to code things up. So see you in the next video.